Hello beadlings, welcome back. Hello and welcome to beads. This month's tutorial is gonna be on a rotator cuff. This is the cuff that I'm gonna show you how to make. It is spooky for Halloween season because even though it's still technically September, in my heart it is always Halloween. Um, if you wanna skip straight to the tutorial, go ahead and go to this timestamp. Otherwise, stick around for some announcements. So first of all, Patreon stuff. The candy care packages for this month are all gonna be Halloween themed. They'll all be very spooky. Um, I don't have them made yet. I will have them made and up on my Instagram within the first couple days of October, just so you can see what they're, they're all gonna be. Um, but as usual, it'll be some singles, a couple cuffs, maybe a pearly necklace, and it'll all be just spooky, spooky themed. Um, Cause that is the kind of stuff that I absolutely just love to do. If you're interested in signing up, go ahead over to my Patreon. I'll put the link below. Also, if you do want to help support the channel, um, support the work that I'm doing, that my partner is doing on helping me edit all this stuff, you can also check out the Patreon if you want to just like help us out. The other thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was festivals. Um, you may or may not know that I went to North Coast Festival in September, so technically this month, it feels like a long time ago, but the beginning of this month, I went to North Coast Festival. It was amazing. All of the candy that I'm wearing right now, except for this choker, uh, everything else I got at North Coast, they were all trades, every single one of them. Um, and I have a, a box full of candy, like a little shoe box that's just full of candy that I got at North Coast. And at some point I want to sit down, probably do this on TikTok or something and just go through it and like tell stories from the festival. I had an amazing time. Um, you know, you can see I got this rotator cuff, which also reminded me that I am overdue to do this tutorial. Um, but that's my last festival for this year. I'm not going to be at any other festivals until 2022. So uh, I'll be at some local shows here in Minnesota, but otherwise that's, that's it for out of state travel for me for this year. The next video I'm going to have coming out after this one is going to be about clear packages. Um, we were trying to get it out earlier this month, but it just came down to timing and we had to choose between either do the plur package video or do a tutorial. So I decided to do the tutorial um, and at least keep that stable, one tutorial a month. And hopefully next month we will be able to get out both a plur package video and a tutorial. I really appreciate your patience and sticking with me while I kind of figure out the schedule for this whole thing um, so that I can do YouTube and also juggle a full-time job and my Etsy and everything else. Uh, so that's it. That, those are all the announcements. On with the tutorial. Hey, real quick, before you start watching this video, I want to let you know that this incorporates a couple of my earlier tutorials. I'm not going to go over ground that I have covered in an earlier tutorial. So if you are not familiar with these things, then you would be better off watching those tutorials first and then coming back to this one when you're done. Um, the Candy Bat is the first tutorial I ever posted on this channel. And I do not cover how to make it again in this tutorial. If you wanna learn how to make this, look earlier on the channel. Um, the other thing that I do not cover is how to make just an X base cuff. You can see here, this is a different cuff, but this type of cuff here, this base is an X base, and I use that same stitch to make the base for my rotator cuff. I do not cover that in this video. If you do not know how to make an X base, you would be better off watching that tutorial first. Um, and finally, the third video is specifically on how to make this style of 3D off of an X-Base. I have also posted that video on this channel, and so if you are not sure how to make this specific type of 3D, then you should watch that video first and then come back. I do explain all the rest of how to make this cuff, how to put it all together, how to determine, you know, the sizing on your center rotator, all that good stuff. It is just those three steps I don't cover here. I will also put them in the description below. I'll put the links down there. And at the points in the video that they come up, I will also put the links in the corner up there. So you can just click the link, go watch that video and come back. Thank you for your patience and on with the tutorial. So the materials you're going to need are pony beads. Um, you are gonna need a lot of pony beads. I am far too gay to count that high, but I would definitely say a couple thousand pony beads for this project. Um, cloth covered stretch cord. I like using 1.2 millimeter. One millimeter also works just fine. Plastic yarn needle. You can get these at craft stores. You can get this off Amazon. And uh, accent beads. So. 
because it's like spooky season coming up, I'm gonna do kind of a pastel goth skeleton skull kind of um, rotator cuff, which is why I have my little box of skulls there. But you can use whatever special beads you want just to make it fancy, and we're gonna end up using these right at the very end. Um, and then of course, scissors to cut your string. So starting out, you're gonna actually need to make a 5X base. Um, I have mine mostly made here. I'm gonna finish making it on camera. But if you are not sure how to make an X base cuff, go ahead and check. It should be here, I think, maybe here, whatever. Uh, but there'll be a link to my tutorial on how to make an X base cuff. Go over there, learn how to make an X base, come back. And I am gonna show you um, just how to finish off this 5X cuff. And in case you're not sure how to build from like a 1X base into multiple X's, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do two things here. Um, one is you can see I have separated the X's going up. One, two, three, this is halfway through the fourth X um, by putting these little pink accent beads in the middle. So all you do is when you are building your X base cuff, you've got your first row of three, right? Um, that's directly above these two beads. And then on your second row of three, which is one, two, three, you're just gonna make that middle bead a different color. So that's all you have to do in order to make that other color. And I'm gonna show you right now, uh, just by doing this row here real quick. Through, just like that. So you can see as this fourth X forms, you're placing that accent bead right above the last row of accent beads. Um, so that's just a neat little trick if you're trying to figure out how to place color on your X base or how to make patterns your first row or your odd number of rows are all going to be on top of each other uh, vertically and your even number rows are all going to be on top of each other vertically so you just have to alternate what you're doing row by row uh, i'm going to finish making this row and you can see this is the way that you build up an x base cuff if you want to make it if you want to make it more than one x tall instead of doing another row of these two beads, you just literally keep building beads on top of it uh, three at a time. Okay, I'm gonna finish this row and I'll be right back. Okay, so we finished the fourth row of X's and we're coming out the top here. And so the fifth row is gonna be my final row of X's on this cuff. Three black in between each pink all the way around the cuff. One, two, three. Perfect. And just repeat that all the way around the circle till we get right back here. Okay, so we are back here. And add those last three. Pull it tight. And go up through those middle two. Perfect. So now we are going to add on the last row. This is the top part of the fifth X. We want it to match the bottom. So this is the only row, one, two, three, where it's all black on an even number. So once again, we're going to do all black, three all the way around. One, two, three. Just like that. And the reason we're doing this one differently is because it's our last row and we want it to match our first row. Okay, so now we are all the way back to the beginning. We've got that fifth X on there and we just need to close it off. So we're going to add two beads in between 
each point. Okay, so we've got the beads added on. The top and the bottom look the same. I do like to tie mine off at this point, uh, at least with a double knot to keep it secure. And then because my string is so short at this point, um, I'm actually going to just triple knot it and then start with a new piece of string. All right, so once you've got your extra string attached to the top there, um, you just tie it in a knot around that top string and hide it inside of a bead. You wanna make sure that your string is coming out of a contact bead. And then you're gonna add five beads and go in the next contact bead over to the right. The reason I say to the right is see how the string is coming out going right. So we're gonna follow the motion of the string. And makes a little point. I'm gonna repeat that all the way around the cuff, adding five beads between each contact bead. Okay, so now you're back at the beginning. Uh, you've got your ring of spikes, just came through this contact bead here. And what you're gonna do, um, this is for a very specific way to make the 3D part that I like doing, because it gives me a little bit more room, like if I wanna put lights in the cuff or something, um, but this is not the most common way to do it. You're gonna string, just like I just did, diagonally through the base of the cuff until you're coming out on this row of contact beads right here. So for me, that's the first row of pinks. You can see it's directly underneath that top row of contact beads that we put all these spikes in. And you're gonna do another row of spikes exactly like what you did. So five beads in between. One, two, three, four, five. And, and pull it tight. So you're gonna have this mirroring rows of spikes just like that. You're gonna repeat that all the way around the cuff. Okay, so you've got your double row of spikes and you've got a couple options from here. One, you could just leave it like this. This with the double row is probably enough to keep the rotating bit from sliding off. Um, and if you like the, the double spike look, just repeat it on this end and you got your base done. You could also do a little carousel cuff action. Um, I'll make another video on how to do a carousel cuff, but if you do know how to do a carousel cuff, you're kind of set up here to just make one um, and, and have little carousel thingies beyond the ends. But the way that I like to do it is run the string up through the middle of that last row of spikes and oof, actually what I'm noticing, so what my plan is, is I'm gonna put these, uh, these skull beads on, but the holes are very tiny. My string is very thick. So actually, before I continue this, I'm gonna switch strings. So I'm gonna tie it off uh, at the base there and I'm gonna switch to a thinner, slightly thinner string so I can show you, one sec. Okay, so what I've switched over to is a one millimeter clear stretch cord. Um, honestly, I would prefer to use fishing line for this because it's even thinner and more strong, but I don't have any. I ordered some and it has not arrived yet, so we are making do. Um, I tied it right there onto the string with a triple knot, and we're going to just, there, run up through the arm and out through the point on that bottom row there. Doesn't really matter if you start with the top or bottom row, this is just where I left off. Okay, great. So now that I have the correct string in there, I'm gonna add my beads. So what we're doing is we're connecting from point to point with five beads. So what I'm gonna do is just repeat the same pattern I have going on, uh, but a little different. So I do one, two, and I'm gonna add a skull. three, and then two more beads, four, and five. And because the uh, the holes in the skulls are so small, I can't use my candy needle for this one, which is annoying, but we are making do. Perfect, and you pull it tight. So it's gonna sit like that. 
clearly, you know, you don't have to use skull beads for this. You can just use regular pony beads. It will still absolutely work. It will fit. You just want to make sure you have one, two, three, four, five beads in between each of those points, kind of connected diagonally. And then we're going to do the same thing. This time we're going to go down, connecting diagonally. So five more beads. One, two, and I want to make sure the skull is facing the same way. So I'm going to go through his chin. Three, four, and five. Perfect. And through that next point. And pull it tight. So you're just gonna repeat that up, down, diagonally, all the way around until you get back to um, this point right here. All right, so you repeated it all the way around. We're coming out this bead here. And now you're gonna run it up through one, two, three, the next three beads so that it's coming out of that middle bead. This is obviously a lot easier when you are using uh, pony beads but we shall make do. There we go. Perfect. So now that it is coming out of that middle bead there, you're gonna add two beads and you're gonna attach it to this one right here. Here, it's like it's doing the splits. So one, two, and through that pointy bead, just like that. And then we're gonna do, again, two beads, and then we're just gonna go directly into that middle bead. So we're gonna go one, two, and up through the middle. There we go. Of course, I decided to like play this on hard mode by doing the skull beads, but it's gonna look so cool when it's done. It's gonna be so worth it. There we go. Perfect. And now we're going to do the same again. Two beads and through that next little spike. One, two, and spike. There we go. And pull it tight. So you can see here. This is the first like X that's done. Because I'm using the skull beads, um, it's a little bit of like a long X. She's a tall X, statuesque. Um, but if you're just using regular pony beads, like it'll just look like an X. And you have all this room inside here. So it, it pushes the 3D part out further. And if you wanna put like lights or something inside of your cuff, this is like a good space uh, where you can do so. Or if you wanna put like I made one cuff where I put like worm on a string, put a bunch of worms in there. Um, it just it just gives you a little bit more space to work with. And it also means that, you know, your 3D like base part is not gonna slide off the end. That's like a firm stopper. So I'm gonna continue going all the way around, diagonally just add two through the middle, add two through the point, add two through the middle, add two through the point, just like that all the way around and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we are back here at the beginning. We just have to add the last arm of the last X. And just like everything else on this row, you're gonna add two beads and go through that middle bead. Um, and then what I like to do at this point is just carry on, go through the middle bead, back up the arm, back to the base and just tie it off. So that's what we're gonna do. we 
go. Haha. <laughs> Boom. Just like that. And you can kind of see actually, this is unintentional, but because these skulls are like so long, it actually made almost a little faux uh, carousel cuff instead of doing X's. Normally when you do this with pony beads in the middle instead of skulls, um, it's just straight up X's, but I think this is super neat. So we're just going to run that string. I can use my, I can use my needle again. I'm so excited. Perfect. Okay, so we're just gonna run that string right back down to the base. Um, and honestly, I could probably tie it off here and nobody would notice, but you just wanna make sure that you are tying it off somewhere that it is easy to hide the knot. Um, and because this is such a long piece of string, it's actually harder to tie a knot with. So I'm gonna cut it and use that shorter end I mean, there's still like length on it, but use that shorter end to tie off and we'll do a triple knot. Just how I like all of my knots. I'm sure there's other ways of knotting and that is totally fine. This is just the way that I like to do it. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, and now we've yanked that knot real tight, and we're going to cut off the extra. And there you go. So that is one end done on the base, and now we're going to tie some string onto the top here and repeat everything we just did on the other side. So we want them to match. Um, I'm gonna, so all my skulls are pointing downwards here, have them all pointing upwards there so that no matter which way you're wearing the cuff, the skulls are always pointing with their chins towards the opening of the cuff. Okay, and I will be right back once I've gotten this all set up. So, now we are done, finished the base, um, and you can see, like what I was talking about there, normally if you use a pony bead in the middle, it'll be just a straight X, but because this bead is a bit longer, um, it ends up being kind of a carousel cuff thing, which I quite like. I think this looks really neat. Um, you can also see, so we've got our bottom, we've got our top, and these are gonna stop the middle rotator from falling off. And then in the space in the middle, we have one, two, three X's tall. Technically, you could probably make a spinner in the middle that is three X's tall. However, um, I don't like having my spinner bump up against these edges. So I will usually make it one X smaller. So we're gonna make a two X uh, rotator. This rotator cuff is, or this base rather, is 36 beads around. A good rule of thumb is like if you add three uh, sets of beads, like three sets of three, it'll probably be big enough. So uh, 36, oh my God, math, 39, uh, 42, 45. So it's probably going to be 45 beads around. I'm going to string 45 beads onto my piece of string and then just wrap it right around the middle to test and make sure that it is in fact uh, big enough. Okay, so I've got 45 beads on the string and I'm literally just going to wrap it around. Perfect. So it's going to fit just fine, still move really easily. Um, and that's how you know, or that's how I know, how big the spinning part of the cuff needs to be. Um, so now at this point, I'm just gonna set the base aside and build this up into a 2X. And like I said, um, you could probably do a 3X and be fine. I just, I don't like having the edges touch. It makes it a little bit harder to spin freely. Um, you could also do like a two and a half X base and that would be totally fine. I don't, love having like uneven um, X spaces where there's like a partial X on it. That is my own personal preference and that is not something that you have to abide by. You can absolutely go for it. Um, I'm not gonna show you on camera making this X space. I'm literally just gonna make a two X space. Very boring, uh, exactly the same type of method that I used to make this, but smaller. So I'm gonna make that and I'm gonna come back. 
Just to show you real quick what I was talking about here. So this is a 2X cuff, one, two. If you wanted to make it one more half an X, you would add three beads in between these points, one, two, three, and then close it off. Um, and that would fit just fine. You can kind of see here, like 2X fits perfectly. You could scrunch in like another half an X up at the top there and it would be fine. You don't really want to go bigger than that. Um, okay, I'm gonna finish this off and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you, I am uh, most of the way done building the spinner. You can see I'm making it 3D using just the same basic 3D method that I showed in this video here. Doop, doop. Um, so if you wanna see how to make that type of 3D, click there. And I just wanna show you when you have a cuff that is more than one X and you wanna make it all 3D, you finish that first row and you just come right out of that uh, middle row that you just put it, finished putting beads in and then you're going to add five beads all the way around in order to make that second 3DX. Um, I don't know if I've showed that in any videos before so I just wanted to real quick make sure that I did cover it here. Um, five beads and into the next bead. It gets a little squishy and this is definitely where you want to have your needle handy because I've done it by hand without a needle before and it sucks. It's very annoying. Um, so see, just like that, you're going to do a whole second row of spikes and then you'll connect it to the bottom just like that. And so you'll have two uh, rows of 3D X's. I will be right back. Okay, I forgot to film this next step. So it's gonna look different for a minute because I had to use a different cuff just to show you this part. Uh, and then it will switch back to the normal cuff that I have been using this whole time. I thought I pressed record and I sure didn't. So <laughs> stuff happens. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, okay, but you can see same type of cuff, same deal, two X high, and we've got the the two rows of 3D X's on there. So what we're gonna do now to connect these X's is we're gonna add seven beads in between each middle bead. So that's one, two, three black, one pink, and one, two, three black, just like that. And into the next bead. Pull it tight so it sticks out into a little point like that. And I do like to, uh, put seven beads instead of five on this next layer because I like it to be very 3D and I like it to stick out a whole bunch, almost like little spikes. You could do five beads in between and it would be much flatter, it would take up less space and it would save you some beads, but I just like the style of how this one looks. So I'm gonna repeat this, seven beads in between each center bead all the way around the cuff and I will be right back with the original color of cuff. All right, so now we've got this done all the way around the circle, coming out of that bead, and we're gonna run it up through to the middle point. This is the same technique that you use for building the other parts of the X space, it's just with two extra beads. So it's a seven instead of a five. Okay, so now that you have your string coming out of that middle bead, you're gonna add three beads and run it through this black bead here. So. Again, same technique, it's just an extra bead. Instead of two beads, you're doing three beads. See, just like that. And you can see there is more space in there. It is more 3D, it pops out more. Technically, this would work with five beads instead of seven. I just, I really like the like chunky look. I like having it be very big and fat and loud and bold. Um, if you want something a little bit more subtle, you can always go with five beads instead of seven. Um, or, or maybe if you want something a little bit less loud, maybe maybe candy is not the thing. Candy is pretty, <laughs> candy is pretty chunky no matter what you do. Um, I think bold is probably a good word to describe candy in general. There we go. Okay, so just so you can see what it'll look like. When you're done, it'll all look like that. It'll have big X's running across the center. So I'm just gonna finish this off um, and add my bat charm and I will be right back. 
So I don't think I've actually shown you this before. Um, if you want to attach a charm, this works for curlers or this works for regular peyote stitch bead charms. My little bat here. Uh, tutorial is the first one I ever posted actually on this channel. Put a link there if you want to go see candy bat tutorial. Um, but I have this little guy and I want to attach him to my cuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to size him up, kind of look, make sure that he is more or less centered uh, on the cuff. And then his wing hits this point here and his wing hits, doesn't quite hit this point here. So I'm gonna move him over a little bit and just figure out like what beads I'm going to use to anchor him basically. Um, he doesn't really fit exactly. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it. Haha, <laughs> that's a bad pun. Um, there we go. So this contact bead, this bead here, fits with this line of his wing here and the same on the other side. So that's where I'm gonna attach it. And I'm literally, all I'm gonna do is just take a piece of fishing line. I don't even know if you can see it. You can see it a little bit. Piece of fishing line. Uh, if you don't have fishing line, regular like clear stretch cord will work. Even regular stretch cord will work in a pinch. Although I don't love using um, the ones that you can see really well because I like it to look a little bit less uh, obvious. So we string it through that bead and we string it through this bead here and just tie it in a knot real tight. It is, uh, it is very simple. It is not super elegant and the knot is hidden behind the charm. So nobody's actually going to see it. So it doesn't have to be pretty. And on the other side, same thing. Make sure I attached it to the second bead down here. So I'm gonna attach it to the second bead down here. Just make sure I'm attaching it in approximately the same place. And string it through that contact bead. Come on. There, nope, come here. There we go. And triple knot. One, two, three. There we go. And then we just adjust him. He's falling down a little bit, so I think I'm gonna attach this part as well. I'm gonna attach this middle bit to this bead here. Um, you can see if I just leave him, he sort of flops. We don't want him to flop. We want him to stand up straight. So one more time, we're gonna take our string and we're gonna put it through this bead. Hello. There we go. And we're gonna put it through this bead. Come on, you. And we're gonna tie it tight. Come on. Go and three. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Now we have a bat that is uh, slightly more excited about staying upright. And our middle spinner is done. So then you just literally you take your spinner and you shove it down over the top of your base and then fix the edges so they pop out nicely. And um, there you go. You got a rotator cuff. Oh, the bat is dizzy. There you go. That's how you make a rotator cuff. Hope you liked it. So it is that time again, time for an outro, which means Hubert gets to co-host with me because I hate doing outros. Thank you so much for watching this. I also really especially want to thank my patrons. You'll see their names. I have like a little credits thing after this. Um, and so if you support the Patreon, you also get your name in the credits. Little, little bonus 
Well, bonus there, you can be internet famous for everybody who watches candy tutorials. Thank you so much for watching the tutorial. I hope that it helped you. Um, if you have any feedback, anything that you would like to see a tutorial on, anything that's really especially helped you, please leave a comment below. I don't always get to, you know, respond to all of my YouTube comments just because I have so many different places that I'm online. But I do read them all and I do really appreciate the feedback and you know I try to incorporate it into the next video. So thank you to those of you who did it on the last video. Um, also, if you make a rotator cuff from this tutorial, please send me the pictures, tag me on Instagram. A bunch of you did with the dizzy cuff tutorial and I tried to like repost a bunch of them on my Instagram story. It makes me really happy to see that the tutorials I make are being used and that they are helpful. Um, so yeah, if you make a rotator cuff, I really want to see it. Um, other than that, uh, I know I said it at the beginning, but I'll say it again. If you want to support the channel, I do have a Patreon down below. Otherwise, you know, even if you don't have any money, but you still want to support, you can like this video, you can subscribe to the channel. Um, people always say to click the little bell so you get notified. I don't know why. I guess I'm supposed to tell you to do that, but like, I, I'll be honest, I don't have notifications on for any of my YouTube subscriptions, so you don't have to do that part. Um, but, but please do like and subscribe if this one helped you. And it make me happy and it will make Hubert very happy as well. And he's a very good boy. You can see there is one brain cell dinging around in this big round skull, uh, and that is a happy brain cell. So we wanna keep that happy. Okay, I love you, bye. Plur.